Oi, pessoal, tudo bem? Aqui é a Luciana, da Street Smart Brazil. So, do we celebrate Valentine's Day in Brazil? Not exactly, but we have a similar date. It's celebrated on a different day, it has to do with a different saint, and we celebrate it a little differently than we do here in the U.S. So, let me tell you about Valentine's Day in Brazil. It is called Dia dos Namorados. Dia dos Namorados, and I will explain the name in a little while. And trust me, if you have a Brazilian significant other, you want to know about Dia dos Namorados in Brazil, so you don't get into trouble. This video is organized in four parts. We're gonna talk about some cultural information, I'm gonna give you useful phrases to talk to your loved one in Brazil, I'm gonna show you some useful verbs for Dia dos Namorados and some sweet words that we Brazilians use to call our loved ones. So the first thing is that in Brazil we do not celebrate San Valentino. Instead, we celebrate, like I said, Dia dos Namorados on June 12. I will explain why June 12 in a little while. The expression Dia dos Namorados literally translates to boyfriend, girlfriend, day. So, namorado is boyfriend, namorada is girlfriend. So, another way to think about it is sweetheart day. And so, this date in Brazil is celebrated by couples, whether they are married or not, even though the name is girlfriend, boyfriend, but married couples celebrate it too. In Brazil, we do not give gifts or flowers or cards to co-workers and to friends. It is a day to celebrate your significant other. So, to celebrate the date, couples give each other gifts. These gifts can include flowers and chocolates, but also nice, expensive gifts such as brand name clothing and jewelry. It's very common to go out to have a nice dinner. If you're gonna do that, check if the place takes reservations because restaurants can be really crowded on Dia dos Namorados. This is the part where I help you not to get into trouble in Brazil or if you have a significant other that is Brazilian. Pay attention! If your significant other is Brazilian, you want to ask them what they expect of this date. If you're not sure, I suggest you get a nice gift and plan a beautiful evening together. While everyone is different, it is my belief that it's safer to celebrate your loved one on Dia dos Namorados and make them feel special. Dia dos Namorados can also be a very fun night for singles. Many bars and clubs host special singles nights with events and games to help you find your next date. So it's a night to flirt if you're single. Now, why June 12 for Dia dos Namorados in Brazil? Unfortunately, the origin of the celebration is purely commercial. It was a marketing idea to improve sales during a month when sales are typically slow. With that said, June 12 was chosen because it is the eve of Santo Antonio's birthday. His birthday is on June 13th. And in Brazil, Santo Antonio, which is his Santo Antonio de Lisboa or Santo Antonio de Padua, is known as Santo casamenteiro, which means he is the saint who can help single women find a husband. There are superstitions around ways in which you can sort of put pressure on Santo Antonio to find you a husband soon, and some people will, for example, leave the saint upside down in a glass of water, and he will only get out of there when you get a husband. Well, now you know what's happening if your loved one has Santo Antonio upside down in a glass of water and you know what you need to do for the saint to breathe again. Now let's go into some Brazilian Portuguese vocabulary. I want to give you phrases, verbs, and sweet words that are useful during Dia dos Namorados. Okay, to tell someone you love them, to say I love you, you can do it in different ways. I'll show you three ways and I'll read each one twice. Te amo, te amo, Amo você, amo você, te adoro, te adoro. You can also say I'm crazy about you, sou louco por você. If you're a man, that's what you say. If you're a woman, you say sou louca por você. To say that you miss someone, you can say estou com saudades, estou com saudades. And usually when we say the verb estar, as in estou, we actually 
say it differently in everyday spoken Portuguese in Brazil. So we're gonna say tô. Tô com saudade. Tô com saudade. Another way to say you miss someone is to say sinto sua falta. Sinto sua falta. Literally, this means I feel your lack. I feel the lack of you which means I miss you. Now, before we move on, please remember to hit the like button. This is how you give me some love. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Feel free to ask questions in the comments. I always answer questions in the comments. I want to show you three verbs that are very useful for Dia dos Namorados, for conversations about Dia dos Namorados. And these verbs are ganhar, dar, fazer. Let's see them. Ganhar means to receive, as in to receive a gift. It also means to win, as to win a game, a competition, or to earn, as to earn money, to earn someone's trust. Pronunciation-wise, the NH in Portuguese is almost like NY in English, but it's subtle, it's subtle, ganhar. So it's not the tip of my tongue that touches the roof of my mouth, it's the middle of my tongue. Ganhar. Ganhar is a regular verb. I have a lesson on how to conjugate regular verbs and I will put the link to the lesson in the video description. So let's see a few useful sentences. This one says, what do you want to get as a gift on Dia dos Namorados? O que você quer ganhar de presente no Dia dos Namorados? O que você quer ganhar de presente no Dia dos Namorados? Do you want to know what you're getting or do you want a surprise? Você quer saber o que vai ganhar de presente ou quer uma surpresa? Você quer saber o que vai ganhar de presente ou quer uma surpresa? This is in the past tense. What did you get on Dia dos Namorados? O que você ganhou no Dia dos Namorados? O que você ganhou no Dia dos Namorados? Now we have the verb dar. It means to give. It is an irregular verb and it isn't one of the easiest verbs to conjugate in Portuguese, but it is well worth the effort to learn it because we use the verb da in many, many idiomatic expressions. What will you give as a gift to Maria? O que você vai dar de presente para Maria? O que você vai dar de presente para Maria? Here is the verb conjugated in the present tense. What do you usually give your girlfriend as a gift? O que você geralmente dá de presente para sua namorada? O que você geralmente dá de presente para sua namorada? Here is the verb in the past tense. What did you give your boyfriend? O que você deu para o seu namorado? O que você deu para o seu namorado? And then we have the verb fazer. Fazer. It means to make, to do. It's also an irregular verb. It's also challenging to conjugate it, but it's a very, very used verb. We use it in many idiomatic expressions. It's worth learning it. What do you want to do on Dia dos Namorados? O que você quer fazer no Dia dos Namorados? O que você quer fazer no Dia dos Namorados? What do you guys do on Dia dos Namorados? Like, this is the present tense. Like, sorry, what do you usually do? O que vocês fazem no dia dos namorados? O que vocês fazem no dia dos namorados? And this is the past tense. What did you guys do on dia dos namorados? O que vocês fizeram no dia dos namorados? O que vocês fizeram no dia dos namorados? So it's also useful to know how to say a surprise. Uma surpresa. Uma surpresa. Or fazer uma surpresa. To surprise someone. Fazer uma surpresa. And you may be wondering, how about the verb surpreender? Yes, surpreender also means to surprise. It also means to take someone by surprise or to catch someone by surprise. When I'm talking about surprising my husband with a gift, with a party, I will say fazer uma surpresa. So that's what I'm going to use here in the examples I'm going to show you. I've prepared a surprise for Anna. Preparei uma surpresa para Anna. Preparei uma surpresa para Anna. You see, para, I'm reading as pra, because that's usually how we say it in spoken Brazilian Portuguese. I'm planning a surprise to celebrate Dia dos Namorados. Estou planejando uma surpresa para comemorar o Dia dos Namorados. Estou planejando uma surpresa para comemorar o Dia dos Namorados. 
Paula surprised me big time on dia dos namorados. Paula me fez uma surpresa enorme no dia dos namorados. Paula me fez uma surpresa enorme no dia dos namorados. Well, at Street Smart Brazil, we often teach couples who are learning Portuguese together, and so they often ask, how do you call your boyfriend or your husband in Brazil? So I'm going to show you now some of the sweet words that we use in Brazil to talk to our significant other. First, the word is love, amor, amor. And we can say meu amor, my love. It doesn't matter if the person is a man or a woman, it's always meu, because the possessive needs to agree with amor and not with the person. And amor is a masculine noun, so meu amor. I have a lesson on the gender of nouns and I have a lesson on the gender of adjectives. I'll put a link in the video description. So we can also say meu amorzinho. Meu amorzinho. I'm using the diminutive. And the diminutive in Brazil is not always a matter of size or importance. We often use the diminutive in Brazil to express affection. And granted, women do that more than men. So when I say meu amorzinho, it doesn't mean I just love a little or that person is not important to me. It's quite the opposite. I have a lesson on diminutives in Portuguese, so I'll put a link in the video description. Now, these ones I really love. Mo is short for amor, love. And to say amorzinho, mozinho. And to say amorzão, the augmentative, big love, mozão. So again, this doesn't mean one means more or less love than the other. These are just different ways to say it. So I'll say this again. Mo, mozinho, mozão. Paixão means passion. Paixão. The X here sounds like the S age in English. Paixão. Or my passion. Minha paixão. Minha paixão. Always minha. Doesn't matter if you're talking to a man or a woman because paixão is a feminine noun. Coração. The other day I called my kitty coração and my husband Carl found it was funny. But yeah, heart. We call people we love my heart. Coração. Meu coração. Another common way to refer to a man and a woman is gato and gata. It means cat, but colloquially it means handsome for a man and beautiful for a woman. Now this one, if you're talking to a man or about a man, you say gato. If you're talking to a woman or about a woman, you say gata. A very common way to say dear or beloved or darling, querido. If you're talking to a man, querido. If you're talking to a woman, querida. And finally, meu bem, meu bem. This is difficult to translate because literally it means my well. Bem means well. You know, it's just a way to say my sweetie. Now here, I'm curious. Which of these words surprised you, if any? And what other terms of endearment have you learned in Portuguese? I would be really, really curious to know it. Thank you so much for watching the lesson. We have been teaching Portuguese via video meetings since 2008. Our teachers are not just native speakers of Brazilian Portuguese. They are teachers of Brazilian Portuguese. They know how to make it easier for you to learn and to speak with confidence. And with one-on-one -on -one lessons, you can learn at your pace, you can learn exactly what you want, and you can control your schedule. So you can book a trial lesson to test drive us. Visit streetsmartbrazil.com. Muito obrigada. One more time. Tchau, tchau.